Uh, we are going to start your printmaking project, um, but before you get started with it, so I'm showing you how to do the printmaking so that you can understand how your design should work, um, but don't actually use your phone until um, you're ready. Um, but so as far as the printmaking is concerned, um, the steps, you're, the, the pr items you're going to need to do the actual printing part um, out of the baggie that you had, you're going to need some printmaking ink. Um, if you didn't get one of the bags of, of supplies from the art department, you can purchase printmaking ink at, um, at like Azel's Art Supply. I think Michael's might have some. Um, what you're going to want is a water-based printing ink. Um, and so what, that's what you have in this container. Okay. Um, and you're going to want either a ballpoint pen or a mechanical pencil or a very dull regular pencil. Um, you could use either a paintbrush, and you would have gotten a paintbrush in your art supply kit from the first nine weeks, or a sponge, okay? You might want a popsicle stick, uh, but you could also just use your finger, honestly. Um, just about anything, this is just to scoop ink out of the container, okay? Um, the There is a styrofoam plate inside your bag, um, and it's a little rectangular shape. If you did not pick up one of the supply kits from uh, the art building, uh, you can use a styrofoam plate and cut the center flat portion of the plate out and use that instead. You just essentially need a flat piece of styrofoam. Inside your baggie is a, a piece of like wax paper um, that you can, that all we're going to be using it for is to put the ink on so that you can smear it onto your foam. Um, so you can use just regular wax paper if you have wax paper in your pantry. It is a, wa a piece of like wax paper um, that you can, that all we're going to be using it for is to put the ink on so that you can smear it onto your foam. Um, so you can use just regular wax paper if you have wax paper in your pantry. Um, and you're going to want essentially um, one piece of paper to print on and one piece of paper to design your, your print. Okay. Um, so your one piece of paper, you're going to actually do your print on and the other one is for making your design. Um, and so this, both of these can be in your sketchbook, but the one you're actually printing on, you might end up want to, wanting to tear out of the sketchbook uh, just to keep things neat. Um, okay, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to essentially demonstrate the printing process, um, and that way you can kind of get an understanding of how it works. Uh, what we are doing is called a relief print. If you guys remember from the PowerPoint that you looked at, um, a relief print is uh, the kind that they had in the PowerPoint was a woodblock print. And so what you're doing in a relief print is you are coming in onto a flat surface and you are carving lines or patterns into the flat surface. Then you're putting ink on top of the flat surface. And then you take your paper and put your paper onto your flat surface and rub it. And it'll transfer the ink from the flat surface onto here. And that will leave any of your carved lines white because the idea is the ink won't go in the carved line. And once again, please do not be following along with this portion of the video just yet. You'll, you'll replay the video again uh, when it comes time to actually carve your foam. But for now, uh, what you are doing is you are just watching so that you can design your image with an understanding of how it's going to work. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is all I'm going to do is I'm going to take either my mechanical pencil, my regular pencil, or my ballpoint pen, and it doesn't matter which, um, if I'm using a mechanical pencil, which is what I have, I want to make sure that my lead is pressed in, right? So you guys can see my pencil with the lead out. I'm going to come and I'm going to push the lead all the way in because I don't want a sharp point. If I have a sharp point, I might cut all the way through the foam. And the idea is to press the foam down, not to cut through it, okay? So I'm going to come in and I'm going to make an image on my foam. So I'm pressing the foam down. You guys see the indention I'm making? I'm not carving through it, I'm just pressing into the foam. Okay, and now the design I'm making is very simple because I'm just like making it up as I go. This project, you guys will come up with a design first and then you'll carve it into your foam. And so the idea is um, that you need to make sure you have come up with something that is, first off, has a good composition um, and secondly, is using your space effectively. OK, uh, so you're still responsible for creating an interesting and unique design. Um, I want you to note that um, in certain places on my design, some of the pencil is marking the foam. That does not matter at all. So if you're using a ballpoint pen and it's making red ink all over your foam, it doesn't matter. OK, another thing I want to draw your attention to 
is you guys can see I carved lines, right? But then in the tongue that I'm drawing, I drew the outline of the tongue. And now what I'm doing is I'm coming in with my pencil and I'm pressing the foam down completely in this space. So I'm trying to essentially color it in, so to speak. But again, it doesn't matter if you're actually leaving a color on the surface. You're just pressing the foam down so the surface is no longer flat. Okay, so you can see that this is now indented. Um, and I could use a popsicle stick to indent the foam if I wanted. I can use just about anything I want. It's just harder to control the popsicle stick. But the idea is I am pushing this foam down, right, so that that surface is not flat. Okay. I want you to understand that when we ink this, essentially all of this surface is going to be black and anywhere I've carved away is going to be white. It's also important to note that with this, if you mess up on your drawing, uh, you can't fix it. Once you've carved it into the phone, you cannot go backwards. Once it's there, it's there. So I'm going to say that that's done. Uh, my next step is um, to take my paper. This is the paper I plan to ink. And I'm going to do something called register my print. Okay. When you are a professional printmaker, um, you have to take certain steps to make sure that your prints um, have a professional look. Um, and part of your grade for this is going to be whether or not you actually do register your print. Um, so to register your print, what you do is you take your phone. And you guys can see, like, this is one edge of my paper. This is one edge of my paper, one edge, and one edge. And I have a lot of students when they first start printmaking that sometimes they come and they'll they'll come and they'll do their print off in the corner like this, and then try to like fill up the paper by doing more prints in other spots. That is not how you are supposed to print. When you are printing, the idea is that your print goes in the center of the paper as best you can. OK, and there should be a clean white border around the edge. Um, and so uh, what I will be looking for when I'm grading this is, first off, did you center your print in the center of the paper? OK, and then how messy does your border get? Uh, because it's really hard, actually, with printmaking ink to avoid getting fingerprints or stains or ink on the paper. And so we want to try to keep this outside space as clean as possible. Uh, so I'm looking for that neatness. So registering your print, though, is essentially before you ink and before you put any ink on the surface is making sure that you've got it centered. And so if you want, you can take a ruler and measure top to bottom and all that. But I usually just center by eye. OK, and then I mark the corners of the foam on the paper. This is registering your print. OK, that way, when I go to ink it and turn it over and put it on here, Right. Um, I have something to line the print up with so I don't mess it up. OK. Um, another thing that printmakers do is usually uh, when they're making a print, um, they are making multiple copies of the same image. Uh, that's one of the benefits of printmaking. Uh, it was one of the earliest methods of mass reproduction that existed. Uh, so essentially, if I ink this plate three times, I could print the same picture on three different pieces of paper and all three would be exactly the same. OK. And so what a printmaker will do is they will number their prints um, so that you can identify how many prints um, were total from this plate um, and um, which order they were printed in. So on this bottom corner, the bottom right hand corner of the paper, a printmaker will write a fraction. OK, so they will put a number on the top. They'll put a line and a number on the bottom. OK, the top number represents what order the print was done in. So this is the first one. The bottom number represents how many prints I made using this piece of foam. Since I'm only going to do one, this is one out of one. OK, if I had two pieces of paper, right, then I could print this one on this one and on this one. And instead, my bottom number would be a two. OK, and this first paper would be the first one I print. And the second paper, I'd come and I'd register. Let's pretend that I did. Jeez. Uh, and this one would be two of two, indicating that this is the second one I printed out of a total of two prints from the same piece of foam. OK, so if I did 100 of them and this was one out of 100, that would mean that this is the first print in an addition of 100. OK, 
okay? But because, again, you guys are only doing one, you have an addition of one, so you're doing one out of one. And I do expect to see that number on the bottom corner. Uh, the other thing printmakers do is they sign their print. Now, when you sign the print, the signature goes on the bottom right-hand corner to the right of the addition number. And it should stay inside the registration marks. So this line comes down here. So my signature needs to be in this space right here. Okay, so I want my signature right here. It should not go past this point. Okay, and it should not go past my registration number. Alrighty. So, so you can see how my signature is to the right of the registration number, but inside my registration corner, and then the addition number is over here. Okay, so now I'm going to set this paper aside. Okay, the next step of your project is to ink your styrofoam and to print your styrofoam onto your registered piece of paper. Um, so there's a couple of things I've noticed as I was messing with the supplies. Um, first off, I noticed that your ink that is in your bags um, or potentially the ink you purchased might be a little on the thick side. Um, so what I have done, since this is a water-soluble ink, is I took just a tiny bit of water and I mixed it in with the ink and stirred it until it was all mixed together and solid. Um, the idea is your ink should have a consistency where it actually like it can move in the jar. If it's saying solid on the side of your container, your ink is too thick. So if you guys look, I've got the ink sitting like this and you see how it kind of flowed to the center. And then if I turn it to the side, you see how eventually you see how my ink moved from this from the bottom of the cup and it's starting to actually like flow. Okay, um, so the other thing I noticed is that attempting to use a sponge is really not very effective. Um, so you can do this a couple of ways. You could transfer the ink onto your little wax paper and spread it that way. Um, but I think what's actually going to be the most effective for you without a brayer at home is just to use your paintbrush. Um, you will need your ink for one of your other projects this nine weeks. So make sure you do not use all of your ink. So what I'm going to do is I put ink on my paintbrush and I'm going to start applying the ink in the white spaces. I don't want to have a big glob of it on my brush uh, when I go over any of my lines. So I want to go over my lines. Okay. And I'm essentially just putting the ink on the surface. Don't try to paint inside your lines. Just try to put it on the surface. You do want to go a little bit quickly. Don't rush. Um, but you don't want to take forever because if you take too long spreading your ink out, uh, your ink will dry on the plate. Okay, so if while you were inking it, you ended up getting some ink in your lines like I did, okay, uh, you see how some of my lines are white and some of my lines have ink. What you want to do really quickly before you move on is take your uh, drawing utensil and come back in and try to scrape out some of the ink out of those lines. So I'm just going to come in and I'm going to remove the ink from those lines. Okay, um, so then what I want to do is I want to take my print, my ink plate, and I want to take my paper. I want to try to be really careful not to get ink all over the corners of my paper. And I'm going to take this, and I want to line it up with my register marks and drop it. Okay, it's important that you don't try to move or alter your, your plate. Just press it down, and then pick it up and flip it over. Okay, and on the back side, you're going to do what's called burnishing. All right, so I'm going on the back side and I'm rubbing kind of vigorously all of the corners, all of the edges, and all of the center of my plate. And the idea is that that will transfer my ink over from my styrofoam onto my paper. Now, if I was too slow, I was a little slow, my ink will have dried, okay, and um, it won't transfer. But I can check that. And if it's messed up, then I can come back in, wash my plate off, and try to print it again. Okay, and I might decide to thin my ink out a little bit more so that it takes a little longer to dry, if that's the case. I'm not going to just go rip my paper off completely. I'm going to check my corner, okay, like that. So now I'm going to come and I'm going to rub it again because I saw that there's still uh, spots where my ink didn't transfer. I'm going to check my corner over here and rub it again. Okay, I'm going to check my corner down here, and then I'm going to rub. 
OK. And I'm going to check over here and then rub some more. OK. Now, what I'm noticing about my print is it looks like my ink did dry too quickly. And I think that this is now my second time around with this. I think that what we're finding is that without that, the proper tools, this is a difficult task to complete correctly. Um, so as far as your inking is concerned, do the best that you can. And if your print ends up looking kind of like mine, where it's clear that your ink was drying too quickly, that's okay, because we know that you don't have the exact tools that you need. Okay, so when I take it off, what you should be seeing as a general idea is, again, my ink dried too fast, uh, so it didn't transfer as well as it should. You can see the ink dried on the plate right there where it should have transferred over to my my paper and like ink dried on the plate over here and it should have transferred over to my paper. Um, but in a perfect world, you would have had the right tools. So you could ink it really quickly and then transfer it over. So it does make it harder to work. But you can see as a general concept what this should be doing. Those spaces here in the bow that I pressed down and the tongue that I pressed down, you see how that is completely white and none of the ink transferred. Um, and then the lines that I carved are completely white and none of the ink transferred. Uh, so what you should note is that when you're doing this, um, the again, the part that's flat, that's the part that will be black. And the part you carved, that's the part that will be um, white. OK, um, you should also note that the styrofoam makes it really difficult to carve large suctions. I wouldn't do anything bigger than like the tongue here uh, that you have as a whole segment. Um, and you might need to use more ink than what I used because I didn't use a lot of ink and that might be why it dried so quickly. So try to use more ink than what I did. Um, and then uh, the other things to keep in mind are you should note that it reverses the image. So if you look at my foam, I carved my tongue on the left side, okay, and my bow on the left side. And when I print it, my tongue is on the right side and my bow is on the right side. And what that means is that if you use words, your words will be reversed, okay? So you either need to write them backwards on here um, or, well, they need to be backwards on your styrofoam so that when you print it, it prints them forwards, okay? So just uh, either avoid using text altogether or make sure that your image is backwards on your styrofoam. Okay, and that is printmaking in a nutshell. Uh, so this first time that you watched this video, what you should have done is just watched it to get an understanding of what is the final product. Um, and again, this is acceptable as far as turning this in because we understand that you don't have the best supplies at home and you don't have the right tools. Um, but try to get a better print than what I got. Try to not have these white spots where there's not supposed to be white. OK, um, as far as your project is concerned, uh, the parts we're grading for are to see that you did register the print, that you did number the edition, you signed it, you tried to keep your paper clear. I should, in your turned in photograph, have your styrofoam and your print um, and your sketch. Um, so what I mean by a sketch is that is the step that you will be completing next. If this is the first time you've watched the video, you'll be completing your sketch next. And what your sketch should be is your sketch should be a plan or a design showing what you're going to make for this image. Okay, a sketch really shouldn't take a lot of time, but you're planning out the image before you actually draw it onto your phone. Uh, that way you've decided how large you want it to be and you're making it fill the paper Okay, so when I turn this in as a finished project, I will be turning in three things all in one photograph. So I will be turning in my sketch or my design that is right there. Okay, I'll be turning in my actual print and I'll be turning in my phone. So it'll be a photograph that has all three items in it like this. So again, if this is the first time you're watching the video, the next step is for you to do your, your sketch. 